Just when you thought it was safe to go back on the bird app. Yeah. Spoilers, it was never safe. To go back on the bird app. No, not really. $44 billion. Night and Elon bought night and Twitter. I just keep thinking of that panel from the Spider-Man comic. Like, think what you could have done with that money. You could have cured cancer, but I don't want to cure cancer. I want to turn people into dinosaurs. Yeah, except in this in this instance, it's it's less that and more. I want people to stop laughing at me. You know, I have a theory that this all started off as a joke. Probably. But then we were laughing at him, not with him. And he he did he just went through with it out of spite. What confuses me is like you're one of the people that said this. A lot of people have said like he doesn't have the liquid capital. No, he doesn't. So how is this working? Bank of America and Morgan Stanley are loaning him the money. Oh. So even if you're not a Bank of America customer, they will still find a way to fist night. <sighs> Because isn't all his money in Night. crypto or something? Oh, and Tesla stock. Which he can he can only borrow against if he sells it. His tax bill changes. He, it's just it's it's stupid. It's fucking the whole fucking thing is stupid. But if he if he tanks Twitter. Yeah. Is he Ooh, la, la. no. This oh. is just he just he has money. He's still got money. He, he, this is literally him setting $44 billion on I just mean, fire. I just mean paying those loans back, but I guess we don't call in loans on rich people. No. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, he, he, he set $44 billion on fire, is what happened. But, um, like, I know I don't like people who are buzzkills, but it's not like this is a, like, I don't like when I'm like, hey, fun thing. And someone's like, hey, here's why that sucks. And you're a bad person. <laughs> but this isn't a fun thing. Like, think about. You could have probably housed every homeless person yeah. in America. Yeah. Yeah. You could have sent every kid to college for free. But you could no. have probably fed everybody on the planet. But no, it's more important that people on the internet are able to say the n-word freely that's that's what really matters i know now for those of you out there who are watching this on youtube i know a lot of you are like um number one either one uh you never were on the bird app very smart or number two you're like well i'm out and i don't blame you um i'm a little stuck because I am a content creator on the interwebs hey. and stuff like platforms like Twitter and YouTube and Patreon, they all turn into cages after a while because if something happens, I have to start over someplace else. But I have set up a Mastodon. I'll put the link into this week's show and, and uh, or at least down there and you'll be able to find it. Um, if you leave Twitter, but you still actually give a shit Nine. what I do and you're interested, please follow me over there. I'll follow back if I can. I want to keep track of y'all. And I am also planning on... I'm, I'm on TikTok. I'm nicer over there because my nieces are there. Um, so I'm not as much of a heinous night on TikTok. But that doesn't mean you should night with me. But I, I, I will... Uh, I'm thinking about... Well, I'm not thinking about I'm trying to, to figure out how to get all of a Discord set up. But I'm an old fogey. But I will attempt to to set up uh, a Discord for y'all. Um, but yeah, I I I would drop it in a hot second. But I need to eat and pay bills. And yeah. welcome to welcome to the hellscape. We we've done. The, I don't don't think I don't understand. I did this to myself. Now let's let's get to to my particular niche of stupid. While Rome burns. Yeah. Yeah. Like like the band on the Titanic. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call. Crazy. What the fuck is wrong with you? And um, 
we're starting with that 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 uh that social media shit this week. I held off on this story because I was waiting for the FAA investigation, which sounds weird as shit. But they've completed it, and now I can talk about it because it looked like this was the the case, and now the FAA has gone in and said, "Yep, this is what happened." So um, now let's mock this fucking asshole. Um, YouTuber who jumped from plane caused it to crash in order to record video of it. FAA said it's revoking Trevor Jacobs' private pilot certificate and that he chose to jump out of the plane solely so he could record footage of the crash. The YouTuber parachuted from a small plane over California mountains last year after claiming engine trouble purposely caused the aircraft to crash so he could record it, the Federal Aviation Administration said in a recent letter. See, there are a few like organizations and, and government entities I trust really well, but the FAA, I, I tend to kind of, when they say some shit happens, it's like, here's all the stuff. You can look at it. We got all the list right here. If they say this shit happened, yeah. Uh, the April 11th letter to Trevor Jacobs, say Jacobs' private pilot certificate has been revoked. On November 24th, 2021, you demonstrated a lack of care, judgment, and responsibility by choosing to jump out of an aircraft solely so you could record footage of the craft, of the crash. The uh, Taylor Craft BL-65 single-engine plane uh, left Santa Barbara County that day and crashed into Los Padres National Forest in California. Fire season. My dude, if you so much as fart as a tree, it explodes into flame. Yeah. That's how California works now. And what my do you... State, my, my state, too. And we what... don't breathe wrong here. What do you do? You, you launch... A large multi ton object full of flammable liquids at the trees. You are fucking luck. The video titled, I crashed to my plane. Oh my God. He actually titled the view because, of course, you do. That's how YouTube works. And here's my question I don't know what standard in those small planes. Dan isn't here, unfortunately. He yeah. does. He was wearing, he was very, like, they show him jump out of the plane. He's very clearly wearing a parachute. And yeah. I don't know if that's the standard when you're flying one of those small planes. Because otherwise, that pretty obviously, like, that's pretty obviously a stunt. Well, yeah, I mean. So he can't be like, oh, I had no idea. I, but I don't know if you're normally wearing a shoe. I'm, think of how much money this plane cost. And he crashed it for a YouTube video. Now, I, I, I hand it to the FAA for being meticulous about this, but on the other hand, that's all they're doing. He can't fly anymore. That's kind of a slap on a wrist. Yeah. You, he could have started a fucking forest fire in a fucking national park. Yeah. YouTube was a fucking mistake. That seems, that seems like an underreaction. I'm I'm just picturing the whiteboard they had going. Okay, I need ideas, people. What are we doing this week? We got to get the views up. Crash a plane. Crash a plane. No bad ideas. Don't put that up on the board. Crash plane. No bad ideas. Apparently, generally wear a parachute just to fly. Hmm. Which kind of makes his whole "this was an accident, I lost an engine" thing yeah. obviously bullshit. Because on video, you're wearing a shoe. Dumbass. It's like driving while wearing a helmet. Yeah. And you could have burned down California. Again. Um, I, I learned a new... The next one. I learned a new phrase this week. I, I learned about a new thing. Speaking of, I'm very sad that I was away for testicle tanning week. You really... Yeah, that was, that was something else. It's not fair. Um... Novelty 
Grenades! All clear given after novelty grenades in luggage prompt bomb squad res response near Miami-Dade International Airport. Toy grenade discovered in some luggage in the cargo... Toy grenade... Uh, that's doing a lot of work in the sentence. You'll see why. Um, in the cargo area of Miami International Airport led to a large police presence, including a bomb squad response. The suspicious, suspicious item, at first believed to be two grenades, were found inside luggage in a cargo warehouse after several hours. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue said nothing serious was found. This is driving me crazy, this final sentence. What they thought were grenades were actual, actually demilitarized novelties. No, no, th those grenades. Grenades. No, no, it's a demilitarized novelty. It's not a real grenade. Is it, it's, it's, a, it's that a grenade shell? Well, yes. Would that lead it's me to... It's not live, a, but it's still a It grenade. is a grenade. If I saw a grenade shell an actual grenade shell that they use for fucking grenades, I would think that's a grenade. Yeah, yeah. like your car doesn't stop being a car because your battery dies. Yeah. That, that's... <laughs> it's still a fucking grenade. It's just not a lot. That I... is the, the euphemisms going on in this fucking uh, demilitarized novelties. Toy grenade. Really? That's, that's, a, that's a toy now. No, that, that'd be like if you got an actual fucking Glock and filled it with confetti. Oh, it's a demilitarized gun. No, people are going to be thinking you have a fucking gun because it used to be a gun. Why would you want just a grenade? Probably to get people to react like you had a fucking grenade. Oh, because you suck. Yes. Okay. But the, just the, at the fucking airport. Just fucking, why do people keep bringing this shit to the airport? Everybody who does this is like, oh, no, it'll be fine. And I don't it's been understand. 20 years since we mm -hmm. became completely paranoid about the airport. Still got to take my shoes off. You have had the time. There is ignorance is no longer an excuse. It's there, there are kids who have graduated college who have never known a world without taking off their fucking shoes at the airport. You don't get to be like, gosh, I didn't know you couldn't do that. Yes, you did. Yes, you fuck. It's like it's like, well, it'll be fine. They'll, they, here's what I think the idea is. It will be fine because they will be they will take a careful, measured response. And when I explain to them. That yeah. it's not actually, they'll be fine with it. Not realizing these people. Hmm? What? And because I'm special. Man, these people have, I've watched these people throw away my fucking fingernail clippers. And you think your goddamn grenade's going to be fine. They straight up broke souvenirs that we brought, bought for people on that recent trip. Like, we, we opened our luggage and it had one of those tags that, like, yeah. your bag was inspected. And I had bought figurines for people that were just straight up smashed. Yeah. A, fl a fucking flamingo figurine, because that was a big threat to national security. Yeah. This is why I don't fly with my, my guitar anymore. I'm like, no. All right. This is next. This is speaking of thinking I'm special. I drive an old car. It's it's from 2003, but it's only it's got like under 80,000 miles on it. It still drives just fine. It's it's you know, I don't do so I've got it's it's as long as it runs, I'm keeping it. However, there is a line. And that line is way before we get to here. Canada Driver going to pick up kids from school stopped in vehicle with no doors, seat belts. A driver left British Columbia Mounties so speechless earlier this month, the police agency tweeted a photo of the vehicle with no comment. <laughs> photo posted Wednesday morning shows a small flatbed truck with no passenger side doors and no seat belts. The back of the vehicle also appears to be open, 
with the seats exposed. BC, uh, BC Highway Patrol told CTV News Vancouver in a statement the driver was stopped on a highway. Uh, making the situation even more risky, the driver was reportedly on their way to pick up a child from school. In that? In that. Stones is not a LARP. But there ain't nothing wrong with the radio. <laughs> <laughs> now he said the vehicle was removed from the road permanently so the driver was handed several tickets including for not having insurance for a defective vehicle for operating a vehicle without seat belts and for failing to produce a driver's license i mean who ensure that <laughs> oh is it a four-door or a two-door no <laughs> No, no, it's not a, it's not a yes or no question, sir. Got no doors. Did you ever see Follow That Bird? No. Oh, you never saw Follow That Bird, Sesame Street? Okay, they, they, they drive all, all the people for Sesame Street, they drive all across the country to try to Big Bird, right? And they all have their own vehicles. And I forget who was stuck in the vehicle. I think Gordon and someone else were stuck in the vehicle with Cookie Monster. And by the time they got where they were going, the car looked like this. Only, you know what? That was oh. Sesame Street! Yeah. Susan and Gordon, thank you. Someone actually knew. <laughs> you were just, just going to put a kid in that, in that car. <laughs> we're going home, Sean. Hold on tight. Just like, pretend. That's just... It's just a glorified golf cart. <laughs> just pretend we have a door. Use your imagination. <laughs> it's magical. It can do anything. I <laughs> like the car shit. So like, it's like on a very small scale that scene from Final Destination. Yeah. Because there's nothing keeping all that shit inside the car. <laughs> nope. Uh, so next one is in, in, in a little flipping around the audacity of this motherfucker. We have seen people who have pretended to be cops pull yeah. over people and they've accidentally once or twice pulled over an actual police officer, usually in an unmarked car. Well, this takes the stupid up a notch because this kid and I say kid because obviously apparently he was under the age this kid pulled over a marked police car maybe it seemed like a good idea at a time but a youth driver is facing charges after pulling over a Lacombe police officer this week uh, the officer was on patrol when a civilian vehicle attempted to pull over the marked police car by displaying red and blue flashing lights in the front window and yelling at the police officer to pull over. We say this resulted in the youth driver being charged with multiple offenses under the Traffic Safety Act. Police service would like to remind the public that any attempt to impersonate a police officer can result in charges both under the Criminal Code of Canada and provincial legislation. The audacity. It doesn't, doesn't say why. No, it doesn't say why. Because I need to know why. Like, what did you want? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, did you? Were you trying to do it for a? I bet you I could do it. I bet he'll believe. I bet you I could purse. I bet he'll. I bet. I bet you. Was it for YouTube? Might have been. No, he'll buy it. No, dude, he'll fucking buy it. No, he'll fucking buy it, though. I'll say I'm undercover. He'll fucking buy it. I'll say I'm Jump Street. He'll fucking buy it. If you guys know this, but police in cars have these little things that allow them to communicate with each other. Mm. It's a little, it's, a, it's like a little walkie talkie thing. Yeah. So if one cop comes up on another cop, they can just talk to them on the little magic box. 
Oh, there goes Dottie. The feeder went off. Hello there. Yeah, go get your food. You're starving to death. I know. Aw, kitten. You can't Doogie Hauser the police, right? Tagoras. Oh, yes, really? you can't. Also, Doogie Hauser actually had an MD. He did. He did have an MD. Somehow, straining he was all qualified. credulity. Straining all credulity. My God, I'm glad they didn't reboot that because that would be like. They did. I was just going to say they just did. It's like a Disney Plus show, but it takes place in Hawaii now. And the girl. It's a, it's a Hawaiian native girl, but it's still called like Doogie Hauser. I don't know if it's still on, but I saw the ads all the time like last year. They did reboot it in Hawaii. This is the worst fucking timeline. I you know, I'm I'm I used to fucking love Doogie Hauser. I think I'm finally getting on board with you about the Large Hadron Collider, Tara. I mean, I, I'm, I'm at, telling you, I'm at the abandon all hope fucking stage. I swear to God. Oh, next up again. I I don't understand what the this is kind of like the dog that catches the car. You don't have a next step. You don't, you're not sure what the fuck you were going to do. Unruly passenger. No, not now. Fuck off. Unruly passenger arrested for using emergency slide to exit Chicago bound plane. Passenger was arrested after deploying the plane's emergency slide while on the tarmac at a New York airport. Cynthia McKnight, a 24 year old from Sacramento, California, is charged with disorderly conduct harassment, trespass, and criminal mischief. The plane, which was scheduled to travel from Buffalo Niagara International Airport to Chicago O'Hare International Airport, was forced to return to the gate shortly after pushback because of a disruptive passenger. Before the plane could re the jet reach the jet bridge, McKnight allegedly opened the boarding door, deploying the emergency slide. She then used the, the slide to exit the plane onto the tarmac. Okay. Now what? Because he's still in the airport. You you got out of the plane. Now what, honey? Yeah. What, where do you, what what where are you gonna go? What you gonna do? What like I've been to Buffalo Airport and it's pretty small, but it doesn't matter. You're still on an airport campus. Yeah, you don't get to just walk any door on there. You don't get to walk in and out of them. You have to have one of those little badges like beep, beep. If you're, so you're just going to be living on that tarmac now. Until yeah, the you're not just going to wander in and get a Starbucks. Like, OK, I'll get on the next. No, you, once you've done that, you are officially in a restricted area. Yeah. And they're, everybody's all they, they all have to treat it like fucking terrorists. Because because they don't know why you did that. They don't know why you did that. No. Um, individual is quickly apprehended by local law enforcement. Has been placed on America's in Americans' internal refuse list pending further investigation. So you're not getting back on the plane, sweet. Yeah, you don't you, you get don't, to fly anymore. You don't get to fly. Authorities won't let this slide. Oh, Lady Michelle. Oh, let's. <laughs> like, look, look, I've been to Buffalo. I understand your yeah. enthusiasm to leave Buffalo. Yeah. I get it. But. I was literally trapped there. Oh, no. Yeah, I came back after one con Bravo, and they were also doing, I think, the international games or something, and traffic was backed up, and I missed my plane. Oh, no. I had to spend the night in the Buffalo Holiday Inn. Mm. And I'll tell you what, that commercial about. Yeah, but I did stay at Holiday Inn Express last night. It it didn't take into account the existence of Buffalo, is what I'm saying. Yeah. My sister went to college in Buffalo, so I used to go up there to visit her. And every time I wondered why she went to college in Buffalo on purpose. <laughs> but yeah, this, what was the plan? What were you just like, it'll be fine. No, you, you, it's, uh. 
Well, last one tonight, and this is the overarching theme of what I all of what we do here, what we've been doing here for years. You wake up one morning, you go about your normal day, cup of coffee, read the paper, enjoy the morning. And then all of a sudden, naked. Naked I man. Hmm? You got a feeling. I had a feeling. Naked man driving truck crashes into Pioneer Living History Museum in North Phoenix. And you sc scroll down, you'll see that ju just complete. When they say he got he, he into it, fucking. Like, like oh, yeah. the folk park? Look at that. It's like this is like one of those those uh find the find the object in the picture. Can you find the truck in this picture? Because <laughs> it's all the way up inside the museum. They said the truck was driven by a naked man when it crashed into the museum's general store. The man was found near the scene, but few details were released. Officials say no one inside the museum was hurt. But the driver was hospitalized for non life threatening injuries. The cause of the crash is under investigation. I wonder. Look, I love a gift shop. <laughs> the schlockier, the better. <laughs> I fucking love a gift shop. There's this place near where Dan's mom lives called Ozark Land. It's ridiculous. I love it. I make him go every time and he hates it because it's just the tackiest place on the planet. But I don't love a gift shop enough to be like naked and drive through the front door. Naked and drove through the, the, the front door. The police said the man hit it at 60 miles an hour. Wow. So he was not fucking around with this. Bro, you don't need the souvenir keychain that bad. There's the truck. That, yeah, just the wheels are like the wheels did the thing. Have you ever seen, you've yeah. seen like a car accident where the wheels go from this? The wheels do this. It's like the car has given up. It's like fucking Mater in the fucking cars. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> enough. I just, I've been on Twitter long enough that all I'm looking at these pictures and I'm just picturing some dude. Being like, excuse me, that's not historically accurate. And the employees being like, get out. Uh, a person at the scene said the museum is always trying to make repairs, maintain the bu building, but the funds are limited and must be selective with what they pick. They're, this was surely not an expense they were anticipating. I mean, no. Fucking hell. How the you're in the museum, you're behind the register, you got your you, you got your you, you propped up, you got it, got your Starbucks, you're looking at your phone. Kabam! Not only is there like the biggest, loudest, most terrible noise you ever heard, not only are you suddenly lucky to be alive, there's a penis in your face. That's your morning likes uninvited penis in their face right and i think that's the thing more men should know and this feels like you know how they used to have a uh, celluloid film yeah and they would have different reels of film yeah like the whole movie <laughs> wasn't on one reel this right. feels like you're coming in on the third reel yeah because we're missing a big chunk of what and these reporters never fucking ask. Like no. they do your job. Go down to the jail. Find that fucker and be like, Sue, tell me what happened yesterday, man. Where the fuck are your pants? What happened? Uh, tell me how the people deserve to know how you came to be hurtling like a bat out of hell, naked in a pickup toward the folk park gift shop. <laughs> That's got to be a fascinating story. <laughs> or probably the weirdest fetish on earth. Yeah. 
Like, are you Christopher Lloyd and just came back from the Old West? <laughs> or did you just do too much meth today? Marty, those Indians won't even be there. You got to think fifth dimensionally. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's not how that works. It's like hack three of a stoner comedy. A really weird thought. Oh, no. Is Back to the Future. Oh, no. A weird, very sanitized 80s version of Breaking Bad. Is Breaking Bad the gritty reboot <laughs> of Back to the Future? I mean, you will in fact think you've gone back in time. That's true. What if actual time travel meth? <laughs> and instead of a DeLorean, a shitty RV. <laughs> uh, the first thing I guess we learned tonight is you have to prepare yourself as part of the human experience, as part of living on this planet any day, any time. You are not safe from an intrusion of genitals. You just, you just have to accept that. That's going to happen to you. May, with or without a speeding vehicle, you don't know. And it's like, you know, what, what baffles me those folks who are like, Everything happens for a reason. Oh, really? <laughs> Break this one down for me. Yeah. Tell me God's plan. <laughs> includes, for that one. includes random penises. Um, we've learned that you need to think shit through past, well, I'll do this thing and it will yeah. be fine. Like the emergency slide has all those big letters and big bold red words on it for a. Re it's not like it, nothing on there said except Cynthia. Caution! You have been this. They can do whatever the fuck they want to you at the airport, man. Oh yeah. It's it's. it's you a, don't. Yeah. You don't mess with those people. You might never come back out. Um, they can do. Their We've learned that if you are not a cop and you try to pull over a cop, there are ways they'll know you're not a cop. Especially if you're like a minor. Yeah. You can't just there like. There is an age limit on that job. How old are you? 38. <laughs> I'm 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 two weeks from retirement. <laughs> I, I got a I got a hormonal disorder. I don't like to talk about it. Um, we've learned that driving the car until it falls apart is a euphemism. Yeah, shouldn't actually do that. Yes, we've learned that a if it used to be a grenade. It's not a, a, a demilitarized novelty. It's an X grenade. Ship of Theseus philosophical <laughs> question. It's still a fucking grenade. <laughs> and finally this week, we learned if you are going to crash a fucking single engine aircraft to make a goddamn YouTube video. Turn the computer off. Look, it pains me to use this phrase. It pains me. But we've come to the level where I have to say, motherfucker, touch grass. No, not like that. 